coup leader is named Prime Minister of Thailand, promising reforms to end years of political turmoil, but also raising concerns that the military is seeking to strengthen its hold on the country. So when will democracy be restored? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. Thailand's top general has been appointed prime minister two months after overthrowing the elected government. General Prayuth Chanocha was the only candidate. He was chosen by a legislator predominantly made up of military and police figures in a vote lasting barely 15 minutes. Prayuth said the May coup and the imposition of martial law were necessary to end political turbulence and violent protests. His critics are concerned the military takeover will now signal an era of repression rather than democratic reform. Veronica Pedrosa in Bangkok helps now get our discussion going. From career soldier to coup leader and now prime minister. General Prayuth Chan Ocha has placed himself at the heart of Thai politics, with little, if any, room for rivals, both at the government level and on the streets. Today there have been protests starting again. Are we going to go back to the old days? I would like to ask people that. If you want that, I will have to enforce the law. Uh, this is a different kind of coup that we're seeing in Thailand. Uh, we've had uh, many coups, as uh, you know. But uh, you know, this time the, the coup is, is uh, absolute, uh, there's absolute power. Uh, the coup is not delegating authority to the, a lot of technocrats like we've seen in the past. In typical military fashion, General Prayuth has a strategy, a master plan for Thailand, and he's working through it methodically. This was the moment when he announced the coup to the nation. To reform the social structure economically, socially and in other ways, to create equality for everybody and for every side, the peace maintaining committee, which consisted of army, army forces, navy and air forces, as well as the national police, has to take control of power to administrate the country from 22nd of May 2014, from the time of 1630 onwards. <laughs> Taking power in this way makes it seem as if Prayuth and only Prayuth can get things done. Public expectations that he can solve the many issues facing Thailand are high, even more so now that he's Prime Minister. Veronica Pedroza, Al Jazeera, Bangkok. So let's bring in our guests now. In Bangkok, we have Natakorn Devakula. He's a political analyst for the Thai programme The Daily Dose and a former independent candidate for Bangkok governor. Joining us from London is Tim Forsyth, a professor at the London School of Economics and Political Science and a Southeast Asia specialist. And in Hamburg, we have Saxit Sayasumbat, a political blogger and founding member of Siam Voices. Welcome to all of you. Thanks very much for joining us here on Inside Story. Uh, Natakorn Devakula there in Bangkok. I mean, you'll well know that Thailand is no stranger to coups, but this one, as we heard in Veronica's report, has been described as different. In what way is it so different? I wouldn't say it is altogether that different from previous coups with the kinds of uh, structure uh, that is in charge after the coup, it is not altogether that different. So I, I would not agree with that premise in your question. Uh, although people do have different expectations after uh, every one of these coups, altogether the structure that is in place afterwards in terms of military control is pretty much similar. In the fact that we have, we're seeing almost total military control, aren't we, of, of the legislator now? Well, you get you get control, you know, here and there after every every coup, but it, it really is uh, going to depend on the personalities of the, uh, the the respective army chiefs. I mean, it happens to be the case that General Prayut is a person who commands uh, respect and is able to you know uh, uh, control, I think, the mood of the country uh, rather well uh, in comparison to 
previous military leaders. So in that sense, you can probably credit uh, that to him and his, his personality or his persona. In that way, it is different. Uh, you have previous army chiefs who have launched military coups, but then in the aftermath, people are not really afraid of that particular person mm. because the persona is very, is very different. Compared to the previous coup, General Sonti Bunyaratkalin, he always had a smile on his face. General Bunyarat has, has a grin on his face. So I'm, I, I'm not trying to get too detailed, but I'm saying that the personalities do count here. And General Bryut is, uh, you know, a, a figure that is able to command respect for some reason. It's kind of difficult to make a judgment on this. Uh, okay, uh, Saxit Sayasumbad, do you agree with that analysis? Are you also reserving judgment on what is actually happening in Thailand and whether we're going to see this as a permanent situation? Well, personalities do uh, do say a lot, but so do actions. And compared to the last military coup in 2006, where at least a de facto control has been returned to a civilian government rather very quickly, mm. it very much shows here right now that the military junta that we have right now is going to stay longer, at least for a year. But until then, they're going to push on their so-called, quote-unquote, reforms, whichever way they will look. And, um, may, and that probably means that the influence of the military in that time frame and beyond that will last longer as well. And um, they probably, uh, the military junta has, the only lesson that they have learned from the last military coup in 2006 is probably that they haven't been good enough. And that's why they launched another military coup and they want to go now full out all the, um, all the nine yards. Uh, Tim Forsyth, there in London, how completely do you see this takeover of the military of Thailand? Well, it, it is uh, unusual, uh, given the, the, the last coups in 2006 and then previously in uh, 1991, in that the government is acting in a way which is definitely going out and arresting people and making it clear that any further political activity on the streets will not be uh, tolerated. Plus, they've also left it a little bit longer than expected to call for general elections. At the moment, they have said that they will have general elections at the end of 2015, which is just over a year away. So, uh, it, of course, it may not actually occur at that time. But altogether, that, that means quite a long period of time that they've committed to, to the government being in charge. Mm. So, in a sense, it's, it's a much, much more authoritarian than I think people were expecting. Well, Natakorn has already touched on what kind of man General Pryorth is. Let's look a little bit more than that, because he's viewed as one of the most powerful figures in Thailand, even before he became prime minister. He took over as head of the army in October 2010, seen then as a hardline royalist and opposed to the red shirt movement that has largely backed the governments of Taksin Shinawat and his sister, Yingluck. Pryor said his priority was stability before seizing power. He said he would not allow the country to become another Ukraine or Egypt. He's due to retire from the army in September. Tim Forsyth, what sort of man do you think Pryor is and, and, and how popular is he? Well, he, he isn't somebody who has caught a lot of uh, uh, popular images or uh, contact with the people in Thailand. He was one of the movers behind the, the coup in 2006, but his role was pretty much in the back. Uh, he wasn't seeking some publicity. I think what, he, what he's trying to do at the moment is, is that he, he is, as uh, the other speaker said, uh, somebody who does command respect. Mm. He, he comes across as quite a forbidding, uh, intolerant character. He, he, he has shown anger in press conferences before. Uh, the, the impression one gives is that you do not you do not take your chances with this man. You know, you listen and you do as he says. I think that for that reason, I think uh, he is respected in Thailand for that. Uh, Saxon, he looks like an authoritative figure. Saxon, sorry, some, but does that concern you? That he, concer he commands respect seemingly through fear? Well, the problem is that um, it appears to be that he knows no other way to uh, to get respect, and the only way that he know, probably knows to get respect is through uh, through force and th um, by fear, and that's why, as um, as Dr. Forsyth also, also said before, that's why criticism and dissent is currently not allowed and probably will not be allowed for a long time. That's why people and activists, journalists, academics have been summoned and detained, some of them arrested and charged as well, and that is probably uh, that is probably setting the mood that we are living under right now in Thailand.
Yeah, Nata Korn, Thailand's always had such a vibrant array of voices. I mean, we've had some fantastic discussions from Thailand on this show. It does seem that there's now a more subdued atmosphere in the country. Where are the voices of dissent? Well, there are voices of dissent here and there, but the general sentiment in Bangkok after a very turbulent period before the coup is that stability is preferred. That's why the approval rating of General Prayut is quite high. Most of the polls conducted in Bangkok have the approval rating of General Prayut Chano Shah being at right around 70 to 80 percent in full support of him becoming prime minister if you're looking at most recent polls. Now, we can question the validity of those polls, but at least there is general sentiment that stability is preferred even if it is traded uh, off with uh, restrictions on the, uh, the ability to criticize the, uh, the military. So if you see dissent, it would probably be in social media, in mm. Facebook and in Twitter, but you would not outrightly see it on TV or radio. And, and that's basically how it is right now. But I, I, I do stress that you have stability and people do like that overall and they get a sense that at least this is better than previously before the coup. Mr. Axel, I can see you shaking your head there. Do you disagree with that analysis? I disagree with the notions, for example, the opinion polls. I mean, they have to be questioned as well, not only about the methodology and the wording before, uh, and even before the, uh, before the military coup, the uh, Thai opinion polls have been, uh, to be, uh, sorry to be blunt, but pretty useless. Mm. But, and as I said before, when you create an atmosphere where criticism and dissent isn't allowed, what other results do you get anyway? And, um, the, the, and the other question is about, yes, Things are maybe stable right now, but this is only a short-term solution. The question will be, will this be a sustainable stability? And also, on the other hand, will it also be democratic? Or are these two things mutually exclusive right now in Thailand? Yeah, absolutely. I will uh, broaden the discussion out in just a moment to look at uh, where Thailand is headed. There's just one other point I want to bring up before then. Uh, the crucial uh, division that we have seen in Thailand, you know, this traditional red shirt versus yellow shirt protest. I mean, I know that's morphed somewhat into different categorizations, but broadly speaking, Tim Forsyth, has this situation now better benefited the yellow shirts or the red shirts? I would say it's better benefited the yellow shirts uh, because uh, the yellow shirts were demonstrating to try and bring an end to the government of Yingluck Shinawat and eventually the military came in and did that for them and I think that's many yellow shirts are representing this as a victory for the yellow shirt protests. Um, also it's worth noting that the, the yellow shirts were also demanding reforms to the constitution or to the electoral practices before they had another general election. Now General Brayot has said that he will now carry out reforms. Of course we're all waiting to see what those reforms mm. are going to be but I think most people are expecting them to be pretty much in line with how the yellow shirts want them to be. But we have seen leaders from both sides be put in prison. Yes, indeed. I think uh, the, the primary purpose of the military coup, at least in, in, in terms of its stated purpose, is to restore stability to Thailand, to stop the situation where the, the government is not respected, where people are on the streets trying to paralyse the city. Uh, I think what's, what the military government is trying to do is to try and say, that's it, no more. Uh, let's both sides settle down and, uh, you know, do, do no more of this activity, and now we will build a better platform for political agreement in the future. Natakul, where, where are the red shirts in all of this? I mean, you know, they've got a very traditional stronghold up in the north, the east, the rural poor areas. What are people there in Thailand saying about events in Bangkok? I don't really know, to be honest, because at this point, the main channel that is a voice of the quote-unquote red shirt movement is, is silence. So they're not on the air. Uh, their television network uh, has been suspended. And so you don't really get a, sentiment, a sense of how they feel about the current political situation. There is no poll that is conducted for how people feel in the northeastern part of the country. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there is no movement on the part of the red shirt leaders to try to gather those folks into the capital either. So in a sense, mm. uh, it has quieted down. Now, whether or not they're happy with the 
upcoming government and the performance that it will have on the economy, we don't really know. I, I think General Prayut will be judged based on his performance in the next six months in how he is able to run or not run the Thai economy. If he is able to you know, operate well as prime minister with a good team, a good capable team in charge, you never know. Sentiment could turn around even in the northeastern part of the country. But, okay, but that's a big if. That's a big if. Uh, in general, there's a sense that people are giving him a chance. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it comes with the caveat that he will not violate uh, political and civil liberties too much after he, uh, after he is in power for a couple of, of months. People sort of understand that he's been... Uh, clamping down over the past three months because he's trying to maintain control, send, sending a message to everyone you know across the country. But people are looking for the increase in civil and political liberties, including freedom of expression, to criticize from all corners uh, when he becomes prime minister. So, like I said, I think you know in, a, in the next six, six months, it's going to be critical time in whether or not his approval rating will stay up. Yeah, but like yeah, I said, we, we in Bangkok don't really know how, how Isan is feeling right now, and there's no really way to, to find it out. As Sachs said, said earlier, it, you know, we're, we're unsure how long this quiet is going it, to it last. Really and let's, let's be honest, uh, it's, it's pretty unusual for Taksin Shinawat, who's exiled uh, at the moment in Dubai, to be quiet and to remain quiet. So are you surprised that we haven't heard more from him? This is a good issue. It's not a surprise. To be, to be honest, I think the message is clear. I mean, the message uh, from Thailand on the military apparatus is clear that uh, Thaksin Shinawat and his family cannot be in politics. Uh, you know, look at the previous coup. Look at this coup. The message is clear. So I think on the Thaksin side, he understands full well that he has to step away from politics and remain silent. And the minute that he thinks that he can send in another person, another nominee, to participate in the next election, he's going to be thinking again because it will create the same cycle all over again. So mm -hmm. I think he gets the message on that. And that's why he remains silent. Well, General Pryor's role as Prime Minister is only intended to be an interim one. His first task is to appoint a 35-member cabinet to oversee the establishment of a 250-member Reform Council. This council will be charged with writing a new constitution, which is due to take effect in July next year, and that is intended to pave the way for a general election in late 2015. Saksid Sayasombat, what reforms do you think we're going to be seeing coming out of the military? I'm not confident at all that these reforms will be very inclusive. I do not think that they will, um, they, they will include all, this, uh, all the complete spectrum of the political divide and that all sides that are, uh, that were, that are part of this political crisis will be brought in. What I probably fear that is going to happen is that it will be a very one-sided uh, sided deal. And um, as, um, 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 as somebody said before, the main intent of the military, uh, military junta right now is in order to, um, to reform, in quote unquote, uh, the country so much that um, the political force of tax of tax in Shinawat is going to be locked out, and with that, also a huge percentage of the Thai electorate will also be dis and disenfranchised by that as well. The question is, of course, it was said before that Taksin may or may not be quiet, but will the electorate, will his supporters be quiet? I don't think so. Tim, do you think we'll see elections next year? Will we see elections next year? Uh, probably, if we, if we uh, stick to the schedule as planned, uh, certainly December or maybe January uh, 2016, but certainly that is the plan to have elections, yes. I know it's the plan, but I'm wondering whether the military will allow that to take place and what those elections will be like. I mean, let's look at the past 14 years in Thailand and the red shirts, Taksin's uh, supportive Pue Thai party has won every single election. Do you think these results are going to be honoured? Um, well, it depends who they vote for and what those people do. I mean, the, the, the situation in Thailand at the moment is, is that the, the reds and the yellows are two groups, but all of those groups, those two groups are composed of various factions who are allying with each other. So the red shirts, for example, have got uh, two main groups, which are the supporters of the Taksin family and, and their interests. 
plus a large number of rice farmers and uh, other people in the northern parts of Thailand who generally vote for, for tax and parties mm. because they know that they will get the sorts of policies that they want to get. Now, if somebody else comes along and offers the, those voters uh, things that they want to have, then probably those voters will vote for them rather than, you know, if, if Taxon is, is, forbi is forbidden from standing. It's quite likely that the reforms, as they are called, will basically try and exclude Taxon from taking over. But it is quite likely that somebody else will come along and be less uh, uh, in, in, uh, abrasive to the, to the uh, military and to the other parties, but who will still win the general election uh, because they come up with policies which appeal to the rural voters. Uh, that's a call. When, when, uh, when and if that happens, when you see the poor rural voters support a party winning another election, are we going to see a whole return to this cycle of violence with the, uh, the elite, the royalists, the yellow shirts all back out on the streets protesting that? Or do you think we're going to see Thailand moving into a new era of calm? We're going to see stable days ahead. What you're going to have is still a majority of the votes being casted by Rural, rural northeastern farmers and they will get a large share of the vote but they alone you know through their political party will not be able to constitute a single party uh, coalition so meaning that we're not going to have you know, a Thai Rak Thai or a people's power party or a Pua Thai uh, I, I think if the military is astute what they're looking at down the road is at least the attempt to make sure that a portion of the Parliament is selected, leaving about let's say you know this is this is my my uh, my judgment on this. If mm. they're astute enough to do this, is to have a, probably seventy five percent of Parliament coming by way of elections, twenty five percent coming by way of selections. Now this is similar to the Burmese model, but if it is done here, I think it will it will done in a way that is uh, less so less obvious than what what the, the Burmese. Uh, military try to do. Now, by doing that alone, they can make sure that whichever party wins the most number of votes cannot form a coalition alone, cannot nominate a prime minister without the consent of, you know, the independent organizations that appoint these uh, members of parliaments or even the army. So it's if they're astute enough, they probably will do something like that. Now, I'm not, I'm not accusing them of doing something like that because they have not plan any of these things out, but I'm telling you that if they want to make sure that Thaksin does not play a hand mm. in the next you know, government after this, they will probably have to do something like that. Okay, Saxa, do you, do you share Nata Gordon's optimism that we're going to see in Thailand a smooth transition and a return to democracy? Well, I'm, I do not share this optimism. Um, I rather think that it will get worse before it will get any better, and I, and I don't I don't know yet if we already reached the worst point. I do agree, however, with uh, Natakon uh, that the what he what he just said that a certain portion of the parliament could be appointed. That could be one of those viable plans by the military junta to uh, to have some influence on uh, on the civilian government. But to uh, to go back earlier on. No matter what the, no matter if there's going to be a new constitutions, which by the way will not be, will, we, we will not have a referendum for that um, con new constitutions like we had the last time, for, ex uh, for example. Um, the, the the problem is that we, the military junta is probably going to stay on after, uh, with a new government, and according to the interim constitutions that we have right now, the military junta has um, absolute powers and can have have also wide-reaching veto powers, and it is very likely they're going to still have them when we have a new full constitutions, when we have a, a new full elections, when we have an elected civilian government, and it is probably possible that the military junta will have some influence over a civilian government one way or the other. Mm. OK, a long road ahead, a very interesting one to keep an eye on. Gentlemen, there we will come to the end of our discussion today. It's been very interesting chatting to each and every one of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Natakorn Devakula in Bangkok, Tim Forsyth there in London, and Saxid Saisumbat in Hamburg. And do add your voice to this discussion. You can leave your comments on facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story or... Go to at AJ Inside Story on Twitter. I'm Laura Kyle. Many thanks for watching. And from me and the whole team here, bye for now.